The first thing we want to do is discuss how this device is meant to operate. So essentially you put it on the bottom of a barrel or some kind of column of liquid with this sensing side uh, connected upward like that and you put an ultrasonic adhesive or something that will uh, not have air bubbles and stuff in it and it sends ultrasonic waves and up uh, the waves go through the side of the container or the bottom of the container reach the top of the liquid reflect back down and this thing measures how long it takes uh, it outputs the column height in terms of millimeters um, and it has a sensing range of a minimum of 50 millimeters and I think it goes up to 2,000 millimeters. The asynchronous channel when it's outputting data outputs a header byte of Fox Fox hex and then two bytes of column height data first high byte then low byte and then finally a checksum which covers the header byte the high byte and the low byte and it's a mod 256 type checksum. In order to sense this ultrasonic signal I'm going to use a Leonardo um, board which has a PoE interface on it. It's made by DF Robot and um, so I'm going to connect this sensing device up to the uh, Leonardo board at the end of the day but for now I'm going to measure the RS-232 output with the USB device which is just a poor man's uh, logic analyzer or scope whatever you want to call it um, so we'll go through the process of that the first thing I want to do is make sure the device is working like it says it should from uh, you know just an empirical standpoint of looking at it when you plug it in if the light stays on then it's measuring no liquid in other words can't can't find any liquid present but when that light starts to blink at a rate of uh, one sample every two seconds then the light will blink every time it's taking a sample. Now in order to test the device function I'm going to use a graduated cylinder uh, so that it's just easy to pour a column of water in, and we should be able to measure the height of that um, using this device. Uh, but since this is ultrasonic in order to make that temporary connection you have to use some kind of a ultrasonic gel like this Spectre 360 that can be had on Amazon for a few bucks. Uh, so yeah, so all you do is goop up the uh, ultrasonic sensor side, just like you would if you were getting your baby's ultrasound done. And then pop it underneath there. And make sure there's no bubbles. And then just the suction of it will, will hold the sensor in place. The ultrasonic device has a header with four pins coming off of it. Red is power, black is ground. Its yellow is TX data, that's RS-232 format async data, and then white is RX data. I don't know what the RX data is used for, so we just hooked up the red to black to power, and you can see that that's hooked to power on the Leonardo board right here uh, through these two headers, and then the yellow will be hooked to the signal. In order to capture the signals we have to run the USB software. So here's the USB suite. Loads. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose a CAN setup. I think they have one for analog. Quick setup, async on channel 6 and 7. Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff on here on the screen that we don't really need, so I'm just going to get rid of it just to clear up the screen a little bit. Uh, you can see USB uses two channels to uh, for the quick async, one's TX and RX. Obviously we don't need TX because we're not transmitting anything to the uh, 1602L, we're just reading what comes off of it. So all we really need is RX, but I'm going to leave the TX up there just for reference. Uh, we're getting rid of the rest of these channels. Okay, so now all we have here is the TX and RX. This is a virtual thing. Basically, they capture the signals using the uh, the digital, and then they um, translate it into, or they decode it, I should say, using asynchronous um, profile. So, what what does that mean? Um, let's look at that. So, what they're going to do is they're going to look for pulses that 
uh, happened at 9600 baud, okay, with eight data bits and no parity, and they're going to display it in hex format. Okay, so that's oh, that's okay. We're just going to leave that at the default. Then this is the trigger position. Where do you want to trigger in the data? I'm going to trigger at the very start of the data, and then you have to tell it how to trigger. Since we're only looking at RX data, um, and since the start bit on asynchronous is a falling edge, uh, I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You can see that there's a little falling edge symbol there. You could make that don't care or rising, but we're going to use falling. Okay. And uh, let me see, we'll look at the speed and samples. Um, once it's triggered, it has the buffer will have a third of a second worth of uh, buffering. Well, every this you this 1602L only outputs data once every two seconds when it's um, when there's water present. So uh, either you have to make a very long buffer or you just capture the signals one at a time. And so we'll just capture it one at a time. A third of a second is plenty of time to do that. And uh, when, when it's time to capture, you just click this capture once and then um, it's, it's waiting for the trigger at this point. Now what we have to do is actually uh, hook up the device. So I'm gonna change the focus down here. Here's the USB DX. Um, Got to get a good ground, so I'm going to pop a ground over here. Same ground as used for powering the 1602L. And then this uh, purple line is channel 6, which you can see it's purple, the same purple channel over there. So we're going to hook these, this up to the yellow signal coming out of the uh, 1602L. And so that should be putting out some data because I do have it powered up. Okay, and now there's your data. Okay, so Fox Fox 0000, zero, zero, zero Fox Fox. That's your header byte start. Okay, that's your basically says start a frame. Then the column of liquid height is has a high byte of zero and a low byte of zero which is zero and then fox fox so that's your checksum which includes this this and this uh, it's a mod 256 checksum I started the async channel off displaying hex data but since um, it's really just uh, something that's easier to understand in decimal I've now changed over the units to decimal. So instead of Fox Fox 0000, zero, zero, zero Fox Fox, we have 255 zero, zero, 00255. Okay, so now we're going to actually start adding liquid and then doing some measurements and getting the readings off the asynchronous channel, see what the, the liquid column height is. And you'll notice that right now there's no liquid in it, and we've got a solid blue light. That means that the sensor is sensing no liquid. And I'm going to put some liquid in there. Uh, it's supposed to take something on the order of 10 seconds for the sensor to figure out that there's actually water present and we'll know that when the sensor is starting to blink. And so now we can see that yeah 10 seconds later we've got a blinking sensor. So it's it's measuring the presence of water but that water height is not 50 millimeters high yet. So let's just see what we get from that. Obviously, it's no longer 255.00. So it's saying uh, that we have a column of water that's 105 millimeters high. Well, that's like four inches or something. So obviously, this is not accurate yet. And the device says that you need 50 millimeters of water in order to be accurate. So let's just see what happens when you add a couple of times slowly. Capturing again. Again, no change. So... Unfortunately, this sensor basically understands when there's no liquid and, uh, and probably measure uh, properly once there is enough liquid, but in between zero and 50 millimeters of water or liquid, it's junk. I mean, you just get garbage, and so you have to somehow figure that out in your software. 
that uh, you're in no man's land with respect to measurement. I probably got a inch and five eighths or an inch and three quarters of water in there now. It's saying 56. Is that, could that possibly be right? Um, my caliper? Could that possibly even be right? Uh, let's go inches, zero. Nah, that's not right. That's only 40 at best, and it's saying 56. So, uh, again, erroneous readings near the uh, threshold, it looks like, um, not, which is not great. 68. Again, I don't think we have... I don't think we have quite 50 yet. So, now I'm going to go really slow and see if it all of a sudden starts running that number back down. Aha, 45. All right, so that makes more sense to me. You know, I could see 42, 45. Yeah, I could see that. All right, let's move that up a little bit more. Just enough to, to show a small difference. And now we should see you know, it monotonically get higher. So there's 46, another little dollop. Okay. I don't know if that was a full millimeter, but let's try it. Probably, and the water's still moving around, so this thing only has an accuracy of plus or minus three millimeters, so it's not the most accurate thing in the world. But it should go up definitely now. 46, let's wait for the water to settle out, completely capture it again. Yeah, it still thinks 46, which remember, if that's correct, then, you know, it's still not within its range of, of stated accuracy. 48, although I do think it is now behaving normally. So it doesn't have to wait for exactly 50, but now, from now on, I think we should expect accurate readings here. Otherwise, the device is junk. 52, let's uh, capture again, yeah, okay, I think this is reading pretty well, makes sense that I'm adding maybe a millimeter or something, yeah, that's about right, all right, now I'm going to go ahead and add uh, like a whole other inch of water. And that should be 25 millimeters plus. So I'm thinking maybe just guesstimating. And then quick measurement. Hopefully somewhere in the range of 75. I got 79 on this thing, but who knows? It's hard for me to measure with the caliper. 81. Well, okay. Not that far off then. Okay, interesting. So uh, then let's go ahead and... Add more. Ninety-seven. Okay, makes sense. We go add quite a bit now. And again, let's get a sanity check. What do I expect it to be? I expect it to read somewhere in the. Maybe 118, 119 range. 120, that's not bad. So, you know, uh, I always like it when experimental data comes out like that. Let's try that one more time. I'm pretty much at the limit of my mechanical caliper here. But if I had to measure that just very quickly, rough guess, I'd call it 141. Okay, again, it seems to be working very well at this point. And now I probably am at the limit I am. My caliper reads 155, and I probably got another three. I'm going to call it 158. Uh, 
163. Okay, so yeah, I passed the range of my caliper, so it, it, it does make sense. Okay, so that is how you actually read the data off this thing, and it's supposed to be good for from 50, uh, 50 millimeters of liquid column height to 2,000 millimeters. So an impressive little device for 15 bucks or whatever I paid. Okay, so now that I've convinced myself the DS1603L sensor works reasonably well with a column of water shooting through some glass in my graduated cylinder, this is the real target. What I want to do is measure uh, the real-time state of the oil level in my marine engine oil pan, and it's a big old deep oil pan. You can see uh, it's got to be, I don't know, at least a foot deep. This is like I said, a marine pan, and it's meant to handle the fact that the engines uh, tilt slightly up into the back, and so, and also, you know, just having a little more oil on it for the marine environment. So it's a pretty big oil pan. It's a, off my 454 uh, engines, uh, the Crusader 44 is for third wave. And so what we're going to do now is try that same measurement using water in this oil pan. And of course, then that'll give us enough confidence if that works, shooting through probably uh, 3 16 or more of aluminum or a quarter of aluminum. Um, if that works, then I'll actually try oil. I have some used oil uh, that I'll that I'll put in here and see if it measures as well. Um, the reason for the for going with the oil, of course, is I'm going to need to be able to calibrate this somehow because the speed of sound through water will be different than the speed of sound through oil, and thus probably have a different reading. And if I want to be able to calibrate that in the software and get anything accurate, I'll probably have to do the empirical measurements. So. The test will be done uh, using water um, in kind of a suboptimal way because I'm not going to remove the paint. This is a fairly thick layer of POR15 paint. This is not the oil pan off the third wave engines. This is a, another oil pan from another engine that I have. And so I'm not going to remove the paint to make it worst case. And this cast aluminum surface is not very flat. Normally you would take something and flatten it off so you get a nice big you know, flat surface of, you know, of an inch and a half or something to put the sensor on. I'm not going to do that. So whatever we get out of this measurement test will sort of be worst case. And um, hopefully that gives me some margin for error. But at the very least, if it works and it's shooting through the paint and through the aluminum, then I'll have enough confidence to go ahead with the oil-based version of the test. I mean, why start with the oil if the water doesn't even work? All right, well, this is probably as good and flat of areas I'm going to find on the bottom of this pan without taking a you know a sander or something to, to purposefully flatten off so again we're just no glue we're just going again with the uh, ultrasonic gel and hopefully that'll stay on there long enough for me to flip it over okay so after further consideration I decided not to put the weight of this oil pan on that tiny little plastic sensor uh, but to instead just support the oil pan up in the air a little bit and then some very light pressure on the sensor using uh, the additional box off to the left. So the sensor is now in contact with the bottom of the oil pan and the blue light is on solid and so we're going to start adding some liquid. Okay at this point uh, this is the first measurement. No water. Capture once. You can see that it is triggering and it captured. So it captured this data which is what you expect with no water present. And now I'm going to start adding water. And I'm going to measure the height of the water. It's actually easier to do here because I can uh, measure down into it with a tape measure pretty easily. So I'm going to start adding water here. And uh, I'm going to put in just enough water in a pan like before so that there was at least enough so that the sensor would, would start blinking. So currently the sensor is still blue solid and I have and not very much water at all less than a quarter of an inch we give it 10 seconds probably not going to be enough doesn't look like it's going to be enough
And this is pretty critical. If we get, you know, half an inch of water in here and this thing doesn't start blinking, then there's a good chance it's not going to shoot through the bottom of this aluminum. And that'll sort of be the end of the experiment. Aha! So we do have a blinking sensor. Well, it was blinking. That's not good. Okay, we have a blinking sensor again. That's actually good. So, I probably got... You know, I've only got a third of an inch of water in here. So, it's not amazing that this is uh, operating like this. So, I'm going to go ahead and capture once on the data. And I'm getting about the same thing as I did before on the uh, graduated cylinder. I'm getting that 68 um, decimal. So, yeah, this is actually... Nope, she stopped blinking again. All right, so maybe I'm just on the hairy edge of sensing. I'm gonna go ahead and add. All right, she's blinking again, and I've got a good half an inch of water in there now. So let's just see how that goes. get some more water okay I've sat here and watched the blinking blue light for a few minutes now uh, not to bore you with that but it, it hasn't stopped uh, in all that time so I do believe it's a good solid signal oh it's blink it stopped blinking when I adding more water but now it's blinking again so just the disturbing the water I think is changing the height enough so that it uh, it thinks there's no water. There you go. But now it's it's back in there pretty solid. And I have about an inch. So that's that's less than uh, 50 millimeters. So I'm going to continue adding. Yeah, I'm trying to pour away from the sensor itself, and it seems uh, better for the sensor in terms of uh, not losing sync. Okay, and it is uh, reading that 48, 47 again that it was reading last time when it started getting close, and so I need more water. Okay, at this point we still only have an inch and a half of water, which is not enough to trigger a good reading. So I'm, I'm going to try and get more water in here now. It starts to approach that 2 inch slash 50 millimeter height number that we're looking for. That ain't it. That's still an inch and three quarters, but I'm going to take a USB reading and it's reading <clears throat> 46, 40, 46. So, again, should be getting close to the point where it's starting to read accurately, at least if we can count on that prior test using the graduated cylinder. I'm at one and three quarters inches right now, and I'm going to take a reading. Okay, now it's reading 50, uh, 51. And before, when it did that, it was, it was reading good. So now I'm just going to add enough to bring it up. Maybe about one millimeter. Let's see how that works. If we just get like a slight increase. 52. Okay, I think that's I think that's it. Again, another millimeter. Capture once. 53. Yep, another millimeter. Capture once. 
Okay, I think it's reading reliably through the bottom of the oil pan. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add more water, so I'll be right back. Okay, now using a tape measure right above the sensor and measuring the height of the water in the pan, I'm measuring almost exactly three inches. And that's coming out to 83 millimeters. Alexa, 83 millimeters is how many inches? 83 millimeters is 3.27 inches. Okay, so there you have it. Um, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to add another couple of inches and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so now we have almost exactly four inches of water in the pan. And you can see the pan is probably about a little less than half full. I'm going to guess that's that when you fill it with oil, it really doesn't come up much higher than that. And when I measure it, capture once, USB says 110 millimeters. Alexa, 110 millimeters is how many inches? 110 millimeters is about 4.3 inches. Okay, so pretty close, pretty close. Um, close enough for this work. And now I guess the only thing I have to do is to see how this actually translates into oil. And what I'm going to do next is go ahead and empty this water out and then get quarts of oil and just fill up the oil pan to see how many quarts uh, equates to how many um, units on this ultrasonic measurement device. Okay, so now I want to calibrate the height of oil in terms of quartz so that I can, you know, who cares how many inches there is in the oil pan. I want to know how many quartz or how much I should be adding. So what I've done here, because I'm going to use some old oil that I have, <clears throat> some used oil that I have, I don't really want to use too much of it because it's a stinking mess. So what I'm going to do here is uh, take up some of the space just with bricks in this in this plastic bag. Hopefully it will protect the bricks from getting all oil logged. But I put the sensor right under here below. So it, it should have a clean chute area in, into the column of oil that's poured. And then once I then I'll measure that column of oil with the tape measure uh, and then correlate that to the readings I'm getting off of the, the async. And um, then once I have that, I'll take these bricks out and take this whole thing outside. And then what I can do is I can pour in clean oil, uh, you know, clean out the pan again, pour in clean oil, and then um, figure out how many quarts to an inch in the pan. So, you know, at that point, um, I won't need to actually measure anymore. I'll know um, when I see a reading on the coming off the UART, I'll know how to translate that into inches of oil and then um, like I said separately I'll translate inches of oil into quartz um, without needing to remeasure. Okay I'm about ready to pour the used oil and so I just took a reading as a sanity check first and looks like the sensor is on there and it's reading no liquid presence. Okay I'm ready to start pouring used oil into the pan so that I can see how it affects the readings coming off the async and I'm going to start off with I know it's not going to read, you know, at a half an inch or something. But I'm going to start off with maybe just under the minimum required amount. Uh, so that's maybe like, I'm not quite sure the amount, but uh, I will tape measure it. Okay, and the dipstick reads seven eighths of an inch, and so we'll now take a measurement on the async to see what we get out of it. And it is measuring something, which is good news. That's kind of what we expect. The blue light is flashing, which again is what we expect. So that's great. I'm going to add some more at this point. Again, I don't want to exceed the minimum 2 inch. Not right off the bat, at least. Okay, so maybe one and a quarter on the dipstick there. And the electronic reading says 
44. Okay, so again, similar behaviors before. It's not unexpected. Let's get some more uh, juice in there. All right, should be pushing the limit, getting up there towards that minimum. Do a quick stick reading. And we're at one and three, well, one and five eighths, I'm gonna say. One and five eighths an inch of oil off the bottom of the pan right there. And electronically, we are reading 51. Okay, so what I found in the past is when it's reading 51, um, you know, now the readings are good. So now I'm going to go slow by slow and start taking readings. I'm not going to do these gross pours. All right, so now just under two inches of stick, and maybe one and seven eighths, as measured mechanically and then as measured electronically. Yeah, so it's definitely coming up. It's now 56 which is very reasonable for the amount that I added. We'll come up a little bit more. Um, the good news here is that if the, uh, the range of measurement is within reason here. So basically, if the oil gets anywhere near this low, then I'm horribly low. So uh, the 50 millimeter minimum really doesn't, isn't going to affect me. There's no way I would let it get this low. I'm reading now two, almost exactly two inches on the stick. Okay. And electronically, we're getting uh, 59. Okay, so let's make sure this is going up monotonically and linearly. Otherwise, uh, I won't be able to calibrate the software very well. So wipe the stick. And right at two and a quarter inches. Right at two and a quarter inches of height we are reading. 62. Okay, let's keep going. Okay. We are now at about two and a quarter inches. Maybe just just under two and a quarter inches of fluid. And electronic reading is 66, 65. We're coming up a few millimeters at a time, which is just what I want for this calibration test. Okay. Now up to uh, two and three eighths. Probably could have gone some more on that, but eh, it doesn't hurt to go slow. 68, that makes about sense. Should, should have brought it up a little bit. All right, so the last, here we go. Booyah. Almost two and a half, just under two and a half, maybe two and seven sixteenths, <clears throat> is 72. Yeah, this, this looks like it's going nice and linearly. It's, this is probably going to work for me. Okay. Two and I think I'm going to call it five eighths. Seventy five. Yeah, coming about three millimeters at a time. Huh? That's good.
I'm getting low on used oil here, so it's a good thing I put those bricks in to add some displacement. I got two and three quarters inches of oil in the pan. at 81. A little splashy there, so I'll go slower there. Yeah, almost exactly three inches. Almost exactly three inches. Equates to an electronic reading of. Oh. Eighty-seven. That is three and three sixteenths equating to ninety two. Three and just over one quarter, probably uh, nine, nine sixteen, or sorry, uh, nine thirty seconds, right? Is ninety six. That's three and a half exactly. A hundred and one. It's going to be a nice round number on the screen. About three and three quarters runs the reading up to 105. So we've done many readings and we haven't had any anomalies at all. Now, yeah, the oil's not splashing around in here or anything, but this is really not meant for reading real time as you're driving along in the boat as much as it is for reading at the dock every morning instead of having to open up the engine bay and get down and pull a dipstick. This is an electronic dipstick. You don't really you know, check the oil when the engine's running. It's not a valid measurement. So um, this is gonna suit perfectly for what's needed. You're looking at three and good seven eighths there. Equating to 108, and we're just about at the end of the nasty oil bucket here. Ooh, it's getting chunky. All right, that's it. Probably won't really change the reading any, but just to be thorough, yeah. Just, just under four inches of oil. And I don't think, I think that's a full sump right there. I don't think it's gonna get much higher than that. Uh, but I, of course, will calibrate it with the clean oil. Um, to a little bit higher degree, and that comes out to 113. So it's been linear, it's been uh, regular, you know, the readings haven't like fluctuated or jumped around or anything like that, so it's looking good to use these sensors. Now the only question, of course, will it hold up to, you know, a hot engine and marine environment? That's a whole other question, but 
you don't know until you try, and I don't lose anything really for trying. So um, we're going to go ahead and instrument these engines with uh, these um, DS1603L. I keep saying two, but I mean three L sensors. So I went back through all the pictures, and I wanted to create a spreadsheet that showed the delta between the, in, the oil depth as measured by the tape measure and as measured by the ultrasonic sensor. And uh, the red one on top is the sensor and the blue is the tape. And essentially it's linear, it tracks very well between the two, and it seems like there's about an 11 millimeter difference on average between what the tape measures and what's measured electronically. And of course electronically you're shooting through a little more distance uh, through some aluminum and so that probably accounts for you know at least some of that I think that um, engine pan is probably at least a quarter of an inch thick so there's some of it right there uh, but anyways uh, it looks good um, the data shows that this is probably going to be a uh, workable thing as long as uh, we can handle the temperature ranges involved